Lee. Heath. Matt. Yes. Founders of Falcon. Yeah. Let's start off. Why Falcon? The name? Or why the business? Why everything? <laughs> Let me start. Where, where do we start with Falcon? Where does it all begin? Where does the initial part come from? Uh, the story I just said is it was up in Seattle. Uh, I just thought about this. Started as a really small project. Not really a startup that we wanted to build and all that. It was just kind of, hey, I told Keith, I was like, yeah, you know, it would be cool if we made this thing. And, you know, it would be super useful. Next time we go to a music festival, we'll find our way around. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of started from there and it grew out of that. Uh, at some point, I realized when I was sitting there working my corporate job that out of the, t the 10 hours that I'm there, like eight hours of it, I'm thinking about this. Mm -hmm. And only like half an hour of it, I'm what actually doing work. Oh, <laughs> I was doing technical sales and project management up at uh, UTC. He was an Utah. elevator man. Yes, <laughs> an elevator man. I worked for Otis, the company that builds all the elevators. I, I know. Yeah, yeah. I, I was working up there for Otis. and I was Because sales wasn't, wasn't hitting it, wasn't doing it? I wasn't, I wasn't doing sales, that was the problem. I was, I was sitting there reading through building plans and like doing mm. system specs. I, I was an engineering major, Setting up a mechanical partners. engineering major, and I didn't um, want to do that. So I took a job that was supposed to be more going out and doing sales, mm -hmm. except that it turned out not to be that again. He yeah. was like tech support. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty for, much. For all the people that didn't know what they were doing in the office. Yeah, my How biggest I, yeah, function in the office true. was all the people there were like my parents' age. Uh -huh. So they would come up to me and be like, so how do I print this thing both sided? And I would have to go do it for them. Uh -huh. Or they would be like, well, how do I, how do, I do this on Excel? And Did you need a mechanical to... engineering degree? No, no. <laughs> you need a high school diploma. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, what were you doing? <laughs> uh, I worked at a company called CitizenNet. They are like an ad tech startup based in Culver City, I believe. Um, I always get Culver City and Century City confused. One of the two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> CC, right? Yeah. Um, so they do like ad optimization for people that are looking to advertise on like Facebook, Twitter, things like that. I was in business development there. Um, I actually interned there before I graduated, then worked there for like four or five months after I graduated. You know, it was okay. I mean, I enjoyed the people a lot. Um, I transitioned to doing more sales, and it just wasn't my cup of tea. Doing direct sales, like email marketing, like that was not fun stuff at all. Um, it was very brutal. Um, <laughs> and so we just like separated after you know four or five months, and I was so happy. So what, happy. <laughs> what were you doing, Matt? Uh, I was up in San Jose working for a solar power company called Solmentum, okay. and we were in partnership with Sunrun, which is like the biggest solar provider uh, in the country. So I was doing sales actually for them, um, selling solar power purchase agreements, which is basically uh, a system where uh, cu uh, customers don't pay for the solar panels on their house. They get installed for free and then they buy the electricity that's generated mm -hmm. um, at a rate that's equal to or less than what they're paying for their current utilities. And so let's look at majors. Mechanical engineering, business? Psychology. Psychology mm -hmm. and communication. communication. <laughs> Lesson here is so, your major doesn't determine what does you're doing. Right. No. <laughs> so how, especially, and it seems like not only your major doesn't determine what you do, your major didn't determine where you got a job or what you did in your startup, right? It's all over the place. It's pretty yes. all over the place. I mean, yeah. it, uh, it helps, but it doesn't determine. That yeah, so exactly. let's talk about the hats that you are in your startup. So yeah. who does what at Falcon? So it's kind of interesting because between the three of us, we have to do everything. So our roles like shift around and we just do whatever it comes up. So the beginning when it was just me by myself, I was like a business developer, I guess, because I was going around trying to find people. Uh -huh. Then I was like, all right, I'll just learn some programming. And then we got Matt on board and Matt was like the lead developer and I would just help him sometimes. And Keith was the business guy. Matt was the secret programmer, right? Yeah, Matt was the guy who, Matt lived with us for a year uh -huh. and I've known him for how much, how long now? Two and a half years, almost three. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea he has any programming. I didn't, I, didn't <laughs> I think Keith told me at some point, I was like, really? I knew that he had done some. I knew that he had done some. I in no way thought that he could like program this. And yeah. then he was like, "Yeah, I'll build this." And we're like, "Yeah, sure, Matt." Yeah. 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 Go ahead, build this. We have a lot and of then he built it. Yeah. yeah. We have no idea. He kept it a secret. Yeah. 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 I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's it's been that. Then okay. So I've done. I did load, some iOS development at the beginning. I right now. Then I made our website. And then right now I kind of manage the website and do marketing and so on. Just that. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the website, uh, we had you had the Excel Store guys. Excel Store yeah. last week. Yeah, scroll down. You'll see it powered by Excel Store at the it's bottom of this website. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Right, yeah, our website is actually of created parts of with it Excel were made Store, by so. uh, Mark and Hunter. Wait, how many of you guys were here for that? Were any of you here? 
and then I was like, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a camera <laughs> and two guys there. Excelsior is another of the startup UCLA companies, um, and Excelsior is a product that makes it very easy and intuitive to build a website without having any programming experience. Yeah. Um, it's very easy, you like, click click and drag and it's yeah. you know it's like imagine like a photoshop but for just building websites directly um, and everything automatically saves and you can do it across multiple devices multiple people editing at the same time it's very it's impressive amazing. yeah so let's take a few steps back all right so we we've got the idea for falcon um, what's the first step are you making prototypes are you designing something are you um, are you just buying your ios la app license and praying that a developer arises yeah. and uh, first, first step for us was just kind of getting a feel for the scene, like what, what's, how does this whole thing work? Research, I guess. First step for everything, uh -huh. research. But then the actual first step after that to build, I'll have Matt answer, I guess you have yeah, to download Yeah, I just the started, SDK, right? um, yeah, I mean, yeah, download it all, and then I just started building it, and then every time I didn't know what to do, I would go online and look, read a tutorial for how to build, how to develop uh, an iPhone. Uh -huh. So there was a great website, Techatopia, which had like a complete guide to developing with uh, iPhone programming. And so I just read through a significant chunk of that, uh, learned basic things like how to transition between views and display images and all of that stuff, uh, and then just kind of built it piece by piece, step by step. Uh, and so it really was an iterative process. The very first version of the app, um, all you did was you would like type in a latitude and a longitude uh, <laughs> and a name, and that would like save a location. Uh, and then the actual compass was like a, it was like this drawn in N MS Paint, Happen like here. I've uh, kept it as a sign of how drawn far in we've MS Paint, come. like yeah, gray think, thing uh, with like this red line that like showed the direction. Um, yeah, it's it really is. It you just hideous. build a really simple version of everything at first, and then you just, you know, you you make it better from there. I don't know how many of you guys can see this. Probably no. Probably no. Right. Nobody. <laughs> <Never mind. laughs> but you don't want to. You can. Andrew, you can testify. Yeah. Don't want to it works. Oh, it's not that bad. It yeah. works. Well, the earlier version didn't even have anything graphical. It was just numbers. It was. It was like. Oh yeah. Give you numbers. Tell you a number like what what degree you should. And the number wouldn't change. So that's the thing. That's I guess one way. It's and this uh, there's this is like way of building products called lean, which is really like about iterative processes. You don't you know you don't take the product and think okay this amazing thing and just start building it little by little and it takes like five months before you have anything complete. You build a very simple version first that works, you know does one job completely and then you keep expanding it from there, as opposed to just trying to make this amazing product that does all of these things from the get go. Mm -hmm. And you're pretending that you know how to code, and you sometimes <laughs> make things that works. And, uh, where do you get stuck? Like, what's the big? What are some of the big problems that you start to stumble across? I mean, it could be something related to development, it could be something related to design, it could be a holdup from Apple. What were like the big roadblocks along the way? Mm. Was it that easy? I mean, I mean Matt could speak to the technical roadblocks yeah, when it comes to programming. To specific ones in our case, do you mean, or like general? In general. One of, one of the things I remember we kind of took a while to figure out was how to do backend, which is basically do the database and all the stuff that you don't see on the phone. Yeah. Uh, we spent some time on that one, tried a couple of different things a little bit, and then eventually we found this service that was really great, but that, that was one of the things. I personally was really worried at the time about what we were going to do about it, mm -hmm. but fortunately we found something great for that. Called Parse? Called Parse. Well, it seems like in, in general it's good to know that there's a lot of resources for what you're trying to do. Yeah. 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 So you probably wouldn't have been able to do this like 10 years ago. Probably 80% of the uh, yeah, stuff I did in the first few months, I later found out that was already built into the platform. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that was a lot of my time spent uh, building code for things that could already be done with you know with Apple's Apple's tools so uh, but that it's a good experience to do it anyway and then discover later but I think probably the honestly the hardest thing early on was picking a name <laughs> yeah so did you guys I mean was Falcon the first thing that you came up with we've had some people no, who, in uh, terms of ideas last, or last mark uh, or last week we had height marks and they said that they, they gave themselves a date and they said if we don't have a name by this date 
We're sticking with height marks. That's the best we can do. Uh, do you guys do something like that? We actually we had zipline for the longest time. This is actually what this this app that you saw was called uh, zipline. I, yeah. I just kind of came up with that name like two days after I came up with the idea. And I was like, oh my god, it's amazing! It's the best name ever. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we, I was like super excited about it until we looked on the app store and there was already a zipline. It's already taken. Yeah, yeah. We, were, we were. So choosing a name was a combination of like finding what names were open, just brainstorming tons and tons of names, finding out which ones were open, uh, available uh, for Apple, and then we actually ended up putting out a survey and on Facebook, on Facebook, and asked all of our friends uh, to rank what yeah. names they liked best. Yeah. Um, and Falcon won, right? Yeah. Well, it was. Uh, it was. It was, it was up there with a couple Falcon others. Falcon and Quadrant. Well, those are the two other ones. Quadrant. Quadrant was the other one. And then we realized that we forgot to check whether Quadrant was, t was taken or not. Mm -hmm. And then we checked, we checked and it was it actually was taken. taken. Uh -huh. So we ended up with Falcon, which surprisingly wasn't taken. Yeah. Somehow Falcon mm -hmm. was not taken. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's like finding a domain name. All the good ones are usually taken. Well, you have to do it all though. I mean, when you're doing on the App Store, you don't have to find your the usual like Facebook, Twitter. Domain, but you also have to make sure that there's not a thousand Falcons on the App Store, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, there were quite a few of them. You have like Atlanta Falcons, you have some big brand name Falcon yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's pretty tough. Um, <laughs> actually, but, yeah, there's actually a lot of Falcons <laughs> on the App Store. Yeah. We... But none of them were just Falcon. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Just kept it. So, yeah. let's talk about timelines. Uh, start coming up with the idea uh, around what time? Late September last year. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Got more into it and started building it. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is when I came down here and saw Matt. Yeah. And you were like, saying like December is about when you did like a soft launch at Coachella? No, 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 no that no, was April. April of oh, okay. this April of this year was that, Coachella. Yeah. December's and Matt started. December's when I started, started learning, learning, code. learning programming. Oh, yeah, for yeah, keep in mind all of that. It took us a while to like I mean if we knew all the stuff that we know now, uh -huh. it would have taken a lot less time, but we had to learn from zero. Mm -hmm. So when did you hear about Startup UCLA? March, April. It's actually a really funny, really sure. random story, right? I was, sure yeah, I was on things. Facebook and my friend says I had a status saying, hey, apply to Startup UCLA. And I just looked it up and I was like, oh, yeah, awesome. Huh. We had applied so to a lot of other accelerators by that point. And we had never heard of Startup UCLA. Heard of Startup, UCLA. Startup UCLA didn't exist until like February yeah. of this year. Yeah. Um, and, and anyway, it didn't exist. And so they just like start like, they, they are a startup themselves. They started it and <laughs> got it through the entire university system and got it approved and got a team and got room a room for like an office space for us um, and all the framework set up between February and July when we came into the program. So, so uh, you applied for a bunch of other, other accelerators, but did you get into any of them? We were in like deep talks with like one of them. They gave us an offer to come out there and like talk with them. They were in Maine, right? Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Oh wow. They're in Rhode Island, and so we didn't. We were going to spend like a thousand dollars to fly out there. <laughs> it was at the same time that we were talking to Robert UCLA. and UCLA about doing startup UCLA. Yeah. <clears throat> so what do you get out of going to start UCLA? What happens there? Uh, well, like what don't we get out of it? Yeah. Honestly, there's there's like there's the typical things that accelerators give. I don't know. Have you guys talked about accelerator programs in general? No. Today, no. Okay, so there's these things. The Start UCLA. Since a lot of you guys weren't here last time, it's an accelerator program, which is basically the typical format of it is that it's like 10 or 12 weeks, and they provide office space, they provide a little bit of funding, some mentorship, skill series, all of these things to accelerate the process. Uh, usually they take a percentage equity so it's like a business it's almost like a like a school in a sense they take like six percent of your startup uh, sort of startups equity and they give you some money in the hopes that you know you will do well and you'll sell for millions of dollars and that six percent will generate some income for them startup UCLA is a little bit different in that they take no equity and they had to do that because of school bureaucracy stuff um, so they took no equity but this is the format it was ten weeks Mentorship, office space, a little bit of funding, and all of that. So, you know, those are the main things that they provide that we got from the program. But we also just just being there with all the people there was probably the best thing and my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, got our website built by these guys, yeah. and we just have all these friends that know so much about everything. Yeah, you know, being in an environment where you're surrounded by other like ambitious entrepreneurs, and everybody is working to build an amazing product. Uh, it's it's a, it's a great environment to be working in, uh, and and the office space that we had was fantastic. Um, and more than anything, the mentorship and advice that we got was like top notch 
uh, Robert Chidon, who's the director of Startup UCLA, knows everybody in the LA tech scene, um, and he got some like high-profile people uh, to come out and talk to us um, to like critique our ideas, think, you know, critique our pitches. Um, yeah, we have like Mike Jones, former CEO of MySpace, runs an accelerator called Science. Brian Lee, who does Shoe Dazzle, formerly did Legal Zoom. Diego Burdekin used to be with MySpace, and now he's running Beachmint. They've raised like ninety million dollars. Um, a ton of people of that caliber come out and talk to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, did you ever go through that program, and someone was trying to give you advice, and they just like like freaked out and said like Why are you doing this? Was there any like major shifts that started you? So like. Like in other companies or with us? No, with you guys. Did anybody ever uh, really change your paradigm, shift your paradigm? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think so. Diego, guys, Diego almost did for a little bit, but not really. Did you have a pretty good vision of where you wanted to go? I would say that if anything, it was like it was very, and it still is to an extent. It was very broad. It was like we can go in all these different directions, mm -hmm. and now it's narrower, and that's it's still very broad. Like we can go in a very like wide range of directions. Mm -hmm. But Startup UCLA helped us. I think one thing that, that changed for us, uh, especially mostly very late uh, in the program and kind of after the program, um, was our focus for monetization. Uh, and initially, you know, we didn't worry that much about monetization. But our initial focus with Falcon was to make it a consumer-facing app. Um, so to just make it for consumers to use and enjoy and eventually our hope would be to get like sponsored results like Google has sponsored search results, um, some kind of advertisement type revenue. Um, but as we came out of Startup UCLA and started getting ta into talks with investors, um, we realized we needed a more, uh, a more achievable and more, I guess, immediate monetization strategy. Uh, and so now we've focused a little bit more on building partnerships with businesses um, and developing the ability to license Falcon out to other organizations to use. Uh, and that's kind of what our focus has been now. So we've actually created a framework where other organizations could integrate Falcon within their app. So uh, our plan is to go to Coachella and other music festivals, to go to UCLA and other colleges and say, hey, Falcon would be a great tool for navigation within your app so people can find their way around Coachella, so new students can find their way to their classes at UCLA, things like that. That's a good point though. Talk to me about investors, and specifically investors in Los Angeles. What are investors in Los Angeles looking for? And did you talk to anyone from other places, any locations? Other investors for other locations? I like, know, we talked to other locations, really, yeah. but. To give you an idea about investors in LA, we had our we had our startup UCLA demo day where all the teams and companies pitched for five minutes uh, and there were investors in the crowd. It was the evening, like private event, mostly open to investors. I know, it's um, you know, there were laughs, there were applauses, but uh, throughout the entire night, the single <laughs> Like thunderous <laughs> applause came during Shipmates' presentation uh, when they said the line. Um, they're talking about their revenue model and monetization, and they said, "And we're profitable." <laughs> the crowd went nuts. Thunderous <laughs> applause. Um, so that gives kind of a little window into the the focus, at least, of yeah. uh, investors in LA. Yeah, LA is much more about yeah immediate monetization rather than <laughs> say like a really like high user base or growing user base, which the Valley is, I would mm -hmm. say, like more accustomed to or is okay with. Yeah. If you're in the Valley, you can build anything, and as long as people use it, you're going to get funding. And so yeah, because we we've been talking about kind of what it's like to be in LA. And also there's a big question of, should you stay in LA? Mm -hmm. uh, are you guys happy with being in LA? Or, or, or do you guys, would you consider moving? I'm pretty happy with the LA scene. The, what, the thing is, it's like we haven't experienced the NorCal, the Valley scene, so mm -hmm. we can't really say much mm -hmm. as to how it is different over there. But the really cool thing about the LA scene is that it's small and friendly. And so it is, in a way, easier to get help from people because it, it, there's kind of this like team sense of like okay we're all in this together let's everybody help everybody so our scene can get big which as far as I know my personal experience but as far as I know is not really existent up in the valley and I've really liked it so far but speaking of investors are you guys actually looking for investments or are you just kind of build bootstrapping yep. we yeah we're yeah we're talking to people um, you know, we'll, we'll see where that goes yeah well do you have any idea what you would do with that capital is there a direction you guys want to go in 
Or is uh, it just to sure. afford ramen and <laughs> make, I would say make honestly, parents That's proud. the main, that's probably the, the biggest chunk of it. Is yeah. just, yeah. It depends upon how much we raise, right? Yeah. If we raise like just enough to cover our expenses, then obviously, yeah, it's just going to be like eating and traveling. Well, traveling like from one place to the next <laughs> in LA to go to events, Gas, to go to basically. meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if we raised more, then it would be to you know, do additional features, perhaps bring on somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. We really want to get an Android version done uh, since we're on iPhone only right now and since we're working on a licensing model and uh, approaching other organizations, um, we really want to have that benefit of being able to reach you know, twice as many. Uh, why did you choose iOS? Was it because <laughs> did, did, it's you guys both have iPhones and all that has an Android? Well, we actually, started out, us all actually three of us had Android. Android. So, <laughs> yeah, all three of us, it was, it, okay, so you remember how I said initially like it was just about like orientation, it was just about uh -huh. this like this small part of this compass, like all the other things kind of came later. So initially it was really just about that. Yeah. And I tried the compass on my Android and it didn't work really well. And I tried it on like a couple other phones that didn't really work really well there mm -hmm. either. And we were like, well, and we tried the iPhone one, I believe, and it worked well. And the iPhone supposedly had better geolocation. I'm not even totally sure if that's true now. But <laughs> my, my research back then said so. Uh, and yeah. Then, uh, this, I, I, in my mind, the biggest advantage of working on iOS is that there's not a lot of fragmentation or differentiation yeah. between the devices. Like to give you like an idea, Apple has six iPhones. There's only six iPhones ever. Um, there's probably six Android phones released every week. You know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> and so what you have to do so, is you have to develop for each individual. Well, you don't have to, but if you want to have a good program to develop for every single one of those phones and tailor it to its hardware. Not just mm -hmm. to like the software. I mean, yeah, developing for Android, you build a product that mm -hmm. is stretchable and changeable, and it will work on any on any device, which is great because once you build it, it takes a lot of work. But once you build it, then it should theoretically work on every Android phone out there. Um, but that's the other thing is that there's hardware differences between the phones. There's software differences. Um, different carriers load different stuff on, and so it's a lot more difficult to test and know that your product is going to work well on a multitude of phones. Yeah. Uh, but to be fair, I mean, there's lots of new iOS devices coming on. We just, have, we just had the iPad mini come out yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and not only do we have different screen sizes um, coming out, we have different resolution sizes with like, you know, the retina display versus the yep. non-retina display. So Apple, like? Apple's actually facing a big challenge there because the, that benefit of their environment, that it was easy, that there was only one screen size mm -hmm. um, for iPhones worked really well, but then when they do change it, it suddenly becomes a big headache because developers have built apps that are specifically designed to work in this one aspect ratio, this one resolution. Yeah. Uh, and now with like the iPhone 5 where they added another 176 pixels onto the bottom of the screen, um, you know, we had to redo our app to make it work with that. Uh, and same thing with, you know, iPad, uh, there's complications when they, when they uh, you know, do change these things, so. So talk to me about working with Apple, though. Have you had any problems getting your app approved? Or have you any problems with reviews, S reviews, something like that? Actually, you guys have very good reviews. You're a five-star app, I think, right? Yeah. Oh, really? That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I totally. think you're a five-star app. None of them are our friends. <laughs> not a single <laughs> not, Totally not. No, well, not a single one. Yeah, I'll uh, yeah, yeah. make chunk of them. Actually, um, they are our friends. It's, it's funny. We can, we can edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everyone we knows. Know. Everyone who is in this game knows that when you put an app up, the first thing you do is you ask your friends to give it. Absolutely. Them. I mean, it's just like Yelp. I mean, if you yeah. have no business, you. Yeah. You ask your friends. So if you guys want to give us a good rating, you know, yeah. okay. <laughs> no, we came all we this way. I paid five dollars for this two hours of parking. So <laughs> the least you guys could do is really, really yeah, like it deserves that review. Um, but yeah, it's it's the first version of our app. So we put you submit the app, and it takes like a week for it to get reviewed and get put up on the app store. And mm -hmm. obviously, you can't change anything in that time. And we tested it. And we tested it. And it was great. And we put it in there. Then I made a really stupid mistake with our database, and I deleted this thing thinking, what's this going to do? <laughs> and I deleted it, and then when it got released at like 3 in the morning or sometime, I was like awake waiting for it. Yeah. And I try, and I just like tapped the icon, and it splash screen, that main screen finally shows up, and whoosh, 
crashes. Uh -huh. I try it again, crashes. Call my friend, tries it, crashes. So our very first release did nothing except show the beginning splash screen. <laughs> yeah, our, our issue with Apple is not that they don't approve our app, it's that they do approve our app and it has critical failures, um, yep. which has happened a couple times, um, which wouldn't be an issue if we could result, if we could fix it and submit a new version and have it released. Immediately. But, they take seven days to review, so when we have like a critical bug fix that's like one line of code changed, and we want to you know submit that so our app can get fixed, you know it's another seven days waiting uh, while Apple approves yeah. it. Yeah. So is your app crashed though? Why does it? Why does Apple approve it? <laughs> what are they looking at? We have no idea. We're not sure so. if they actually test it or if they just <laughs> wait seven days to make it seem like they test it thoroughly, <laughs> yeah. so that people will be more careful about testing it themselves. Yeah, that is yeah. definitely because that's happened multiple. Uh -huh. Like one of the main things of it is, it's like all that required them to do is like go okay this tab this tab this tab and it crashes yeah. and they somehow just yeah. like, I think they're just inundated you know they're just overflowing with applications yeah they just don't have enough to keep up I mean we've talked to other developers who had the exact same thing happen to them it's like happened to us is they would have their app crash like immediately or within a few seconds mm -hmm. of it opening and it was approved and they're like what like what is going on that would drive down like the ratings that they got for the app and their usership. Sure. Yeah, you can't change those. The, and the system is really, it's really weird because you can't, let's say you have a, like a crashing version, a buggy version, you can't pull that and restore to an older version. The older already reviewed version. You pull it and you put in that version that already, that had been reviewed and approved and they again take a week to review that. So it's yeah. this really, the app store is There's, yeah, there's definitely a lot of inefficiency there. But on the other hand, Apple, um, you know, has made our, our apps development possible. Um, you know, they don't make anything off of our app. It's a free app, so they get no revenue. Um, except for the hundred dollar, except for hundred dollars per year. Tape. We don't need to um, see anything. <laughs> no, but I, honestly, I, I was very happy to be working with them. I mean, five years ago, if I wanted, if we wanted to build a, you know, a, a software program and release it, um, it, it would, it wouldn't have been possible like this. Yeah. So, um, you know. Xcode is a fantastic programming tool. Um, there's really good, thorough documentation for everything in it, so, so I'm happy as a developer. Let's talk about um, some of your partnerships and places you plan to go with Falcon. Yeah. Um, what was your first partnership? Who did you meet up with first? What was first? I think it was the Tech Crawl. Was it tech crawl? <sighs> yeah, I think I heard these guys talk about the Tech Crawl. Right when so I how did you it. land that one? And what was your what was your partnership with Texas? I went to the first one just as an event, and then while I was there, I used my app. And I was like, man, this is useful. And all of our friends who were there who knew us, us and our product, were like, guys, your app is awesome here. Can you tell them to like tell other people to use this? Mm -hmm. And I was like, sure. And then when they announced the next one, I just contacted the uh, the main guy mm -hmm. through Robert from Monster Accelerator, and I told him, and he was like, oh, that sounds amazing. It's free and everything. So tell us how um, Falcon worked on the tech crawl. What happened? So in the tech crawl, like like how this is working that setting. Yeah. They basically the good thing about it is is they just they search for one term. So this company that ran it was called Tech Zulu. So they would search for just like Tech Zulu, and they get a map on there. And map is basically what we call a collection of locations. So they had eight different places that they want to go. They would search. They would get that one result tap on it and get all eight locations at once. So you don't have to keep searching for different mm -hmm. things. You just search for that main search term. You get all eight locations and then you just pull them up on the compass where you get basically where you are respect to like several of them at the same time. Yeah. And then you know you see the map view and then all the other capabilities. You save where you parked your car, share it with your friends, all of that. Yeah. And it is a tech crawl so people do get there's free alcohol at each station, mm -hmm. so people are getting more and more drunk as it goes on, and uh -huh. their ability to read a map just gets degraded. <laughs> so by the end of the night, when there's like the last two stops, they really they just need something that goes just go that way, just go that way, because if they look at a map, they're just not gonna get. And they've told us indoors fights everywhere. Yeah, we had a couple people tell us that that was a benefit for them. Yeah. yeah. So you guys didn't have to you didn't have to pay for that. You weren't paid to sponsor. You no. no. If you, if you no. have a product that helps people mm -hmm. and they they. We didn't charge them anything. Yeah. So. <laughs> In the future, that's what we'll be doing. Yeah. Hopefully. But, yeah. but you guys, you, you've also expanded a little. You tried to work with some other larger organizations. Talk about those. Mm -hmm. uh, there there was like Burning Man. Man. Burning Man was a big one. Uh, you know, they're very, I don't know how many people here know about Burning Man, but they're very anti-corporate anything yeah, like that. Yeah, we talked about um, kind of 
the idea of going against the man when we met at you start using right. like how you had yeah. to seem like you weren't the man. Exactly. You were the man. Oh yeah, I told him this. I actually I emailed them, the guy, the webmaster for for the for Brandon, and I usually have this like three four paragraph email that talks about us and everything. Mm -hmm. But for this guy, I was like, that's not gonna work. Yeah. So I just wrote this one paragraph email, just like, hey man, what's up? So me and my friends made this app. <laughs> like, this is my name, and you know, I figured yeah, I threw bro. some like terminology like burners, which are people who go to burn yeah, yeah. and playa, which is what you call that, that like area they're on. And I threw some of that terminology in there. I was like, yeah, my burner friend said that would be awesome. I thought I'd tell you guys about it. Like we don't make any money off of this, just doing this. <laughs> and just so, knowing this is gonna be all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, Jesus Christ! This was all yeah. true, though. This is not. Like, but we didn't make okay, this I was gonna go crowd kick a couple more jokes, but I'll lay it off. <laughs> but yeah, but it's true. We don't make any money. Yeah, all of, that, all of it yeah. was true. There was no lying or anything there. I just I wanted I wanted them to know we're not just like big company trying to get into break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so they responded, and then eventually they sent it out on their mailing list. Yeah. It lasted out to like we think there's like eighty thousand people or so on their mailing list. Wow. They sent it out to all of them. We think like maybe thirty thousand saw it. They sent it out like a day before Burning Man actually happened. So we think like 30,000 might have actually saw it. Yeah. yeah. Possibly. It was like one link out of like 50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the very bottom. Very bottom. Yeah. But it was there. Yeah. Yeah. And all it had is said helpful navigation app and then it linked to that email that I had sent. <laughs> yeah. They just it's copied like, and pasted yeah. the email. Which is really funny. <laughs> like, it was like helpful navigation app and then the description was, hey man, my name is Ali. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can see that on our website. You can like yeah, scroll down like our website. Yeah, it's just like, like Jack Speed. I think I, I, think I saw <laughs> that. I was gonna, and I was kind of confused. It looked like you were posting on like a message board. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. We couldn't believe they actually just like copied and pasted it. Yeah. Place. But hey, it Worked. I mean, we got like 500 downloads in like half a day, so yeah. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. So, can you guys talk about any partnerships that you're maybe working with right now, or you're trying to get? Yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. I talk too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say you know we're working. We really would like to partner with college campuses as you know as well as we can. And we were obviously UCLA, UCLA alumni, we all graduated last year, and so we want to partner with UCLA. And so we're reaching out to organizations there, to staff and administration there, trying to partner with them right now. We're hoping to have at least something lined up with them in the very near future. On top of that, we're going to begin reaching out to like music festivals on a bigger scale in the next month or two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we've had we've had interest from from UCLA from a couple of people that we're people that we're talking to there. So. Yeah, yeah, we're we're in talks with them. Already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Now, but, but that needs to be very difficult because schools are usually yeah. notorious for being very slow to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. we know that very well. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So we're looking it's at true. maybe doing something with them in like April of next year or something. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, you know, we'd love to do something sooner, but we'll yeah. see how fast the process moves. Yeah. Exactly. Would you get paid for this? Hopefully. I mean, <laughs> hopefully. Cross your fingers. Exactly. But you know, we're not necessarily expecting that. We want to get like a pilot program essentially up at okay. one school, two schools, three schools. Mm -hmm. Once we show that it's you know a really good tool for these people to use, then we could possibly you know license it to them for a fee. And so, talk to me about more about licensing. What does that entail? Are people getting their own individual Falcon app, or are they just part of the Falcon app that already exists? Sure. Uh, there's different ways of doing it. Yeah. Both of those are possible. The the three main ways that I guess I could say is either licensing. The, I guess this wouldn't really be licensing, but having official and sponsored results on our app. So the you know Coachella provides us with a set of locations for their stages and everything, and it's in our app, and it's called like an official Coachella map. Mm -hmm. But then the licensing of the actual program, it would be either that we tailor a version of this just for their event. And you know it has the locations built in and all of that, or we license this basically as a part of a bigger app. So a lot of these events they have their own mobile apps, and they only have one section called like Map or something that has a bunch of locations on there. And this will just be like a complete enhancement of the navigation process. Instead of mm -hmm. just having a static map or an image, you place it with this that has all these additional capabilities on there. Do you have a preference? Is there one that you guys are trying to push more than the other? Whichever makes us more money. Yeah. <laughs> I, what, what, I think the last one will work pretty well. You think that one will be my personal? No, we think, yeah, I think, so we think that's the one that will get the most response because, um, oh yeah, like Ali said, a lot of these places like Coachella, they already have their own app. So to ask them to also promote our app mm -hmm. um, is it could potentially conflict with their, you know, conflict with what they want. So um, we think it's just probably going to be easier to say hey put our you know great solution into your app and have it be part of, of the official experience 
Um, and I think that, that that's probably going to get more of a positive response. And you're saying that map software that you guys currently use doesn't cost you anything, right? It's part of your developer's license? Yeah, I mean, I don't even know it's actually part of that per se, but yeah, it is. Uh, it is it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just basically the image, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Google, well, Google or Apple's image of... Let's just talk about, um, maybe let's talk about the back end really quickly. Is it, is it expensive for you guys to host uh, mm -hmm. Falcon? Do, is there anything to host? I mean, uh, it's a little bit to host. Yeah, there is stuff to host. There's like the locations that people add. Mm -hmm. So that's just like yeah. attitudes and longitudes, right? And the names of the places. Yeah, those are stuff that we have to host. Like the, the actual, the other locations, the ones that are pulled from Google, obviously are hosted by Google. Yeah. But the ones that we have ourselves, and like the sharing and all that, they require uh, hosting, but we use the service called Parse. Mm -hmm. Which is mobile backend as a service, basically that's what they call it. And it's like they have it's like a I don't know how to explain it. It's it's basically they made it very simple and they've eliminated the need to make any server write any server side code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to really do any back end development. You do everything yeah. front end from your uh, from your mobile mm -hmm. like yeah. App. So yeah, we just use their API uh, and then they have a tiered pricing system based upon the number of API calls and the amount of data you're storing on their server, um, and we're still well within their free tier. So yeah. um, we won't name our friends. But we have friends, and how much does it cost them for how many requests they have? I don't want to say uh, who they are, but well, right now it costs them costs them uh, two hundred bucks a month for how many like requests? You, That's you know? up to fifteen million API requests. Fifteen and million like requests. Several, two hundred dollars. Yeah, going back to that something we said it's earlier about cheap. low barrier to it's entry. Look, think about this. We've had we've been using this backend service for several months now and we're paying nothing for it. Absolutely nothing. Like, it's like Great. basically, and when we get to that point where we will have to pay something for it, that's 15 million API requests per month, that is when you're already successful. <laughs> like, you, when you get to that point, you mm -hmm. should be able to afford $200. Yeah, month. yeah. And so it's, it really is, like, even for hosting now, in this, in our case, we didn't have to pay anything. Mm -hmm. Or learn how to write server cycle. Yeah. Have you guys ever had to pivot from where you've been? I think it's been pretty much straightforward, but have you ever considered pivoting? Has there ever been a point where you guys just thought this wasn't the right direction? I mean, granted, you still have a long way to go, but have you... Oh yeah, we're very, we're very early still. <laughs> are, are you, are you yeah. considering a major pivot? Not currently. I mean, I mean if, if it ever came to the point where it's like, clearly there's no direction to go, then we would, but we don't see that anywhere really in sight. I mean, I think months. the closest thing to a pivot is just our focus, our refocusing of the app. Oh, like not so much towards consumer yeah. uh, and more towards this business to business deal yeah. that we're working on and that has been at least internally kind of a, a big pivot because that our you know our focus uh, you know with business is contacting these organizations uh, my focus with development is now building out this platform and building tools that other developers will use to integrate Falcon within their app um, and that's a very different uh, experience. So, yeah. talk to me about having three co-founders. Like how often do you want to kill each other? <laughs> very frequently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long have you known each other? Because I know you all went to PCC together. A few right? years. We've known that for a little over two and a half years. They went to PCC Did you all, together. Only you two went to PCC. Yeah. yeah. And then, Pasadena City College. Right there and then Matt, you, you met up with them at UCLA. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So collectively, you've known each other. If you add it all up. Ali and I, we've known each other for almost <laughs> five yeah, years now. We've known each other for almost five years now. Uh, and we've each known Matt for two and a half years. Two and a half. Yeah. Okay. It'll be almost three. But well, we were all roommates uh, our senior year. We all together okay, well. for a year. So, so what is, are you guys butting heads a lot? Like, what, what are the decisions that really, like, get you guys in a bind? All of them. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, a could lot be, of it could be any decision. Yeah. The one that we discuss. It's, very <laughs> it's like, yeah, pretty much anything that comes to discussion with other people, not, not anything, but a lot of them really are like that. And on our rule is basically majority rules. And that's the cool thing about having that odd is, number is of people. Uh -huh. yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's like if we are all arguing with each other, which is just like, okay, whatever has two votes out of three wins. Mm -hmm. And now there are like certain things, we haven't come to one of them yet, but there'll be certain things where it like will require a unanimous vote. We haven't come to any of those like super major decisions like yet, but if we did, then it would. It yeah, would I think, I mean, a lot of the times it's like, we know that, that it could just be a majority vote, but we usually discuss it further to, you know, try yeah. and get something unanimous. Um, because, yeah, or at least get that third person yeah. more on board of it. We want to, yeah, we want to be like considering all the options and, you know, 
And so it's, it's good to have a, like a, a lively discussion and we have a lot of those. Yeah. So, so what, does, what decisions need to be made? Like how autonomous are you within your company? I mean, if you're developing, I'm guessing that like if Matt's developing, Keith doesn't say like, you should program in this style no, because, no. but then, no, uh, no. I mean like what, so what are the things that you guys are talking about? Like is it the higher level, is it the, is it the higher level stuff? Yeah, a lot of it I would say is like, if somebody cares about something that you're doing and it thinks they have an idea or like, you know, a perspective as to how it should go, then you would express that. Whether it be Matt regarding business or myself regarding the experience or the, you know, the product. Mm -hmm. um, it works both ways. But yeah. we have a higher level discussions like for product, we'll talk about what feature do we want to add next. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's like a discussion that we'll all have together. Um, for business, it's like you know which you know who who do we want to reach out to, uh, how do we want to reach out to them, um, things like that. Uh, and then obviously, like since we're in talks about investment, you know, a lot of discussions about investment and what, what terms we're interested in. All Is that, that one of those things that you think we'll have to have a unanimous discussion? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. 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 But have you ever guys, have you guys ever had like a really big argument about something so far? What's your biggest sure. argument been? Yeah. Yeah. Our biggest. biggest argument was over something pretty small. Actually. <laughs> That's awesome. Our, it was like I, it, it was it was over the button. Are you talking about the time? That we, yes. The time that we walked around. <laughs> that was the, we had this huge <laughs> argument that just like escalated. It just stopped being about the thing that we had started arguing about, which happens a lot. It was about what would happen to that search. <laughs> how it was about how that search button would animate when you tap it. Yep. And so, what was, what was the decision? <laughs> honestly, that was the. I swear that was it, and it wasn't even it wasn't even like vastly different things as to what was gonna happen with uh -huh. it. It was like when it comes down, does it like change into a something else, or does it stay? Does it, does it as, stay like, up there that? when you click it, or does it? Yeah, disappear? it was it was something like that, and it just escalated from that into this like massive just shouting match where we were in our room and we were like, all right, we need to go outside, and we went outside and we walked around campus for like an hour and a half just uh -huh. arguing with each other very loudly, <laughs> and then finally. We we ended and we just went back and we're like, oh wow. Who lost that decision? Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep that internal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the important thing is like at the end, like we all, we came out of it like, you know, we came out, we came out of it in a good place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a good thing about having these discussions is it's like, if you don't have these discussions and somebody feels like they're like, you know, whatever it is, if they feel like something is going and going wrong and they don't speak up about it, well then, that can fester and right? I think that's how you end up with groups that break apart is if they don't have these discussions. Yeah. Um, but, so I think it's a good sign that we have them all the time because we're airing out whatever uh, yeah. grievances or whatever disagreements we have and then moving on once we make a decision about it. So. Well I want to open the floor for questions uh, really quick. Yeah. Before we do that, um, one quick question for all of you. Yeah. What, uh, all of you can answer this. What was something that you learned, what was something unexpected that you've come across? through this journey to make Falcon as far as it's gone. I guess I would say like personally, like I mean I've been reading about the tech scene, like startup tech scene for probably like a year and a half, close to two years like prior to actually doing anything. So like I felt like I was pretty knowledgeable about it. I felt like I knew like what it is like I was doing. And it's amazing how much you don't know. It's amazing <laughs> how much you learn like when you're doing it. And I still like don't know so much. Like I don't know way more than I do know. <laughs> so I would say that's one of the bigger things is just like how much you continue to learn both when it comes to building your own business, learning about like legal stuff, finance stuff, setting up partnerships, so many things. Like we're constantly learning. Yeah, that's one of the bigger things for me. What about you guys? I think I would say that the biggest thing that I, I realized is that like the only thing stopping you from doing something is you, um, and that you can you can learn anything. Uh, and I think that's like that was something that really just I didn't expect coming into it. Um, you know, I came into this, uh, I came in as the you know as the programmer, um, not because I wanted to be the programmer, but because <laughs> um, they needed a programmer, and I wanted to do this project. Uh, and uh, I didn't see myself ever doing programming again um, coming out of college, but uh, I went into it, I really liked the idea, and I learned it, uh, and it, it was very annoying at times. Um, you know, I got very frustrated, but uh, I ended up learning so much about uh, programming and development 
and now I love it, you know, and I love development, and I love programming, so um, that surprised me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll agree uh, with that, same like thing, I guess, for design for me, yeah. Uh, I feel like these two guys gave the two good answers to, to that <laughs> question, so I'm going to have to go for something far less profound and deep. Uh, I, 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 I was just, <laughs> I, it was funny to me how many people there are that are in this scene that are like, secretly really have like made something that's affected people's lives or are like really wealthy, and, you know, yeah. and we just like don't know about them. Yeah. You know, we were at the start of UCLA, and I'm going to name your names, but this guy came by and he started asking about our product. This was before a demo. Mm -hmm. And he was really cool, and he was like, oh, that's cool, like, I could use that Coachella. I was there this last time, and that's awesome. And he was just a random guy, very unassuming. He was like, yeah, I went to the UCLA School of Engineering here, and we talked. Mm -hmm. And he left, and we're like, oh, he's really cool. We should keep in touch with him. And then later in the, in the program, you know, Robert was reading names, and he was like, and thank you, too. And he mentions his name. So we're like, oh, maybe he's, like, important or something. Uh, yeah. And then we go Google it, and we realize that he, like, sold his company to Google for $100 million. And it's a like, really oh, important part of Google now. Again, I would say it because then you can figure out who it is, but, like, we, we were just like, yeah. oh. Shit. That yeah. guy was. You, you don't want to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just yeah. But you see, you see people like that a lot. You know, you yeah, just yeah. You know, someone will come by and you'll find out like. We like were Mike Jones, the CEO of MySpace. Like I saw him before he came in, and it was just like in the hallway. And, yeah. Like, Could have been anybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then went inside, and then all were like, oh, this is, this is Mike Jones, the CEO of MySpace. Yeah. Oh. Even even Robert, the director of our program, when we had our first <laughs> meeting with him, um, we like had our initial meeting about like applying to start up UCLA. I had no idea who he was. <laughs> I thought he was just like some like some guy. In an initial interviewer like guy. No. <laughs> um, and then you know to find out that he's the director yeah. of the program. He's sold like two or three companies. Successful. He's invested uh, in yeah like several investor. companies. Um, you know, so. But to the credit of the industry, that's one of the great things about kind of the startup industry is that not only are there you don't worry so much about celebrities, you're not worried about approaching mm -hmm. people, but also everyone's very open. They're okay yeah. to talk to you. They don't mind. Know, bouncing off ideas or just introductions. That's I think that's especially true in LA. Yeah. Um, you know, all you mentioned earlier that LA has a very communal aspect to it. Um, and I know that the course of Startup UCLA, I went into it not really having any feelings for the LA tech community. Um, and I came out of it loving the tech community and wanting to contribute and wanting to be a part of it. Um, and I think that there's very much like this feeling in LA that we're all in it together. We want to make LA a great tech community. Um, and that's something that really makes me happy to be working in LA. Answer almost anything. All right. Um, uh, this question actually has to do with your competitors. Uh, so your application, I can see, is like it's pretty. Sounds pretty useful. Uh, but what's keeping a company from like breadcrumbs or other competitors in that space to just take 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 you guys out? Or expanding into what you guys are doing specifically. Breadcrumbs is that like, or is that the concept of breadcrumbs, or is there a company called there, breadcrumbs? There, there's an application called breadcrumbs that pretty much does what you do. Okay. Yeah, they, they have like a photo feature too. Or I don't know if you guys are aware. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's always a danger. In everything. It's like you always have that danger. Someone, you know, the, 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 one of the famous questions they say investors always ask is, "What if Google does what you're doing?" And it's like if the answer to that is then, well, fuck, Google has done it. Like, what are we going to do about it? It's it's really a matter of, you know, there's there's like more technical answers to it. Like, for example, our database is something we're trying to build because massive amounts of data is not something you can build overnight. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really big barrier. And a lot of companies, a lot of startups do use that as a barrier. Perfect example of that is eBay and like how they have so many people and they have the feedback system and all of that and all these other companies with better UIs and better whatever came along and no one was able to take it down. But overall, that danger is there. Nothing particularly stops people. We, what gives us an advantage is that we have the momentum. We have the experience in, in this field or I would say in like the settings in which we're trying to market this. So the colleges and the music festivals and the connections and all of that. And so we might be a little bit better off than other people yeah. in such a setting. I mean, we're only in this space because Google or Apple or anybody else is like, they're not doing it yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they haven't really tackled the idea of temporary locations or dynamic places. Locations. Yeah, dynamic locations, places that aren't like really street accessible. Um, and so, you know, most navigation is, is pretty much designed around driving. Um, and it works for walking too, and Google is mapping a lot of walking pathways. 
um, but it's you know designing a navigation app around being able to walk and navigate in these you know open areas where you have a lot of locations, uh, especially locations that aren't like address specific, um, is something that we haven't seen. You know, we haven't seen these players really show a lot of interest in. So. Yeah. And there are other like you know smaller startups that are doing things that are I would say like kind of similar. There's nobody in the exact same vein as what we're doing, but none of them have won this space yet, right? There's no definitive winner like breadcrumbs I've never heard of before, and I've been like reading into this stuff for the past ten months. It just goes to show that like there's not a high profile of these places, of these are these other companies. So nobody has won this space yet. It's still competitive. We still have a chance to win it. Yeah, because uh, I think they, they've been around since like oh seven. Okay, hmm. all right. Hmm. So they have they have user base. Oh, which leads to my second question: How big is your user base? If you guys don't mind asking. Sure. It's about three thousand something. Right now. Uh, active yeah. users like a week, a month? No, that's, that's just like overall downloads uh, active users. Our so weekly is, active yeah. users, last time I checked, was around about 250. Mm -hmm. um, that's cool. And that was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But this is, you know, fairly early in the process. Yeah, we didn't do any like marketing between when we were launched at Coachella and when we did our official launch in, you know, in August. That was all just doing development. We didn't tell anybody about it. It was just there in the app store, you know, just sitting there. Yeah. yeah, you can like three downloads sometimes. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Anybody else? Uh, was it scary quitting your jobs? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, your I'll, I'll least, say, at least that? personally, like, I mean, I, I and Matt, yeah, I and Matt quit, or yeah, we both quit um, before we started working on Falcon, before that was a possibility. Like myself, before the idea was even hatched. And so, like, I was happy to like no longer be working. I just took time off. It was great. Um, so my parents, <laughs> my parents, you know, wanted me to do something, and then this came around. Mm -hmm. and it was great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I, I've worked. I've worked pretty much since I was like 14, um, and so like I've always been able to get a job when I wanted one. And so when I decided to quit my job, it wasn't. A question of like, should I have a job now or not? It was just a question of like, do I like doing this job anymore? Is this what I want to be doing anymore? Um, and the, the answer was, you know, over time, over about a period of a month, I, I went from, you know, this is something I love to do to realizing that, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, and so once I realized that, I, I left and, you know, I was very happy to leave. Yeah. yeah. In my case, uh, I was just very unhappy with my job and my life, basically. <laughs> I, was just bit, I was just like unhappy all the time. And so, you know, it wasn't really as much as like I quit so I could work on this. It was just I quit so I wouldn't shoot myself. That was, <laughs> that was why I quit. And, you know, I definitely did not tell my parents I'm quitting so I can go work at a start. I was like, I'm quitting because I hate life and I want to come back. And then when I was like, well, you know, I'm all, I also have this like little side project. So. I'll work part time, which I do now. It's like I work, I work as a tutor until I figure out what I want to do. And I was like working on this on the side, and then this grew bigger and bigger, and then you know, kind of eased into it instead of just being like. My mom was ecstatic to have me back <laughs> <laughs> after being away for four years in college. So. Yeah, I'll say that we were all in like a pretty privileged position that we could you know return to like our families basically and have them support us to whatever extent while we worked on this, and a lot of people don't have that privilege, so we were really lucky. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else? Yeah. So would Pathways be like the next step for you guys? Like, I mean, for example, Calpolis Kona. Yeah. You know, you can put like dots on, on a, I guess because on, on the map it would just look like, like that tan color, right? And you can put like the pins on it, but that kind of doesn't tell you how you would walk around the building. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So would that be like the next, the next step? Or I'll say that that's like a possibility. Anything's possible, but that is definitely not the direction that we're taking it. Actively. Yeah, it's it's yeah. yeah, it's not our focus. I mean, G Google and other navigation companies, they are very good at routing um, and at establishing pathways to route you on when you're navigating places. Um, the reason we built Falcon was because there was a lot of places that just aren't conducive to routing because there aren't established paths. Um, and so to actually route you turn by turn um, for the type of uh, use that you'd use Falcon for would be a, a big challenge. Um, and uh, 
people always ask about it because uh, that's what they're used to with like a with like a driving GPS, um, and it's something that we've considered and I've thought a little bit more about how we could accomplish. Um, but at least in the near future, it's not um, it's not a big focus. Yeah. It's a very very resource intensive process. Yeah. So the advantage is like they're heavily advantaged towards the big companies. You know, Google and their whole mapping thing, they have people and cars that they send around. There's just three of us. Like, we can't, like, unless the three of us get in our cars and go around, like, checking every college campus, like, that's not going to get done. That's one of the main reasons for And that. even then, they have that, and yet it's still, like, it often doesn't work well, even at, like, UCLA. Yeah. And so it's, like, how we could compete with them, this monolith and doing this thing that they can't even accomplish well. That's, that's not something we're at least touching right now. It's just of course not, it's yeah, possible. It's not a smart approach. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like we're just starting to work with organizations to partner with them. Um, and UCLA, at least, we've, we've you know, heard from them that that would be something that they would like. Um, and so it's possible that if we establish specific partnerships with different organizations, that we could you know, work on developing that kind of solution within that closed environment. Um, you know, if, if the objective is map the entire world, well, Google's obviously got us beat there. Um, but if the objective is, you know, do the best at routing within UCLA, well, then maybe that's something that we could do. Um, but that's, that's something that we'll figure out with the partners that we work with as we build our relationships. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, is it on that you have to <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So, uh, it's possible. The Twitter and Facebook were there, yeah, and so then I made the uh, I made a blog, yeah, and we just yeah. put the W there. It was completely unintentional, but as soon as I put it up there, I looked at the page and I bust out laughing, and I'm like, guys, do you notice something here? And it was so funny that we were like, all right, let's just keep it there because that's pretty funny. But originally, it was completely unintentional. That's like, I like that. Yeah, we thought maybe we could make it like for the win, make FDW. I was like, nah, let's. Like, I was, I was an advocate of that. Yeah, we're like, let's just keep it organic and funny. <laughs> what the Falcon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where are they? I have a question. Yeah. yeah. If somebody came up to you now and said, you know, guys, we'll give you X dollars, shut the whole operation down. What that X dollar would be? <laughs> sounds like Ooh, that's so an interesting check question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like one of those questions we'll that we would after, argue yeah. about a decent amount. Uh, I don't know, yeah. So we so we had to give those individual good answers. Just yeah, off, off some right of them good problems. But why, um, let me answer. Why, why would you want, why would someone approach them to shut down? Are you Are talking about well, acquiring? Uh, or? Yeah, the times it won't be shut down, but you'll basically get absorbed into yeah, a position, bigger, yeah, bigger yeah. direction where, you know, if you look at any of the if you just look at Google per se, right, they will do these small acquisitions, not per mm -hmm. se because they want to shut it down, because they know that, hey, this is something you want to venture in and we want to bring mm -hmm. you in and give you the resources. Right. So now, for classic example, if they wanted to let you utilize their mapping algorithm or, you know, turn by turn direction, say, you know what, start building your app, make it bigger, better, because right now you're just focused in LA, right? Mm -hmm. You're not focused outside of the US. Well, it can work anywhere. It can work anywhere. We actually anywhere, do have users. Yeah. We have users all over the world. Yeah, we do. One, right. of, our, one of our first so users. That, so that, that's what I was like trying to figure out if you guys have ever had that conversation with anybody. What did that one guy get? If we, if we have that conversation. Then what did that one guy get for his company, 100 million? Yeah. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I think he got even more than yeah. that, but. I mean. Times three, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah. Times three, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah.